the sun is yellow. Do you think this is a myth? Ask someone to draw a picture of the sun, and chances are you'll get a yellow or orange circle in the sky. Surprise! The sun is not really yellow. If you see it somewhere outside the Earth's atmosphere, it'll look white. How come? According to NASA, the sun's temperature is the reason why it's white. The sun consists of all colors mixed together, so it appears to our eyes as white. Then why do you think we see it as yellow or orange from Earth? Colored wavelengths, which are yellow and orange, are longer, and they are the only ones that make it to our eyes. The other short wavelength colors sprawl in the atmosphere, and the sky looks blue to us during the day for the same reason. Meteorites are hot as fire when they land on Earth. What do you think, myth or fact? When people see a fireball around a meteorite, they think it's super hot. Well, this is a myth. Meteorites don't immediately land on Earth. Most of them have been in space for billions of years. Space has a cold environment, just a few degrees above absolute zero cold, you know. But don't meteorites fall into the Earth in flames? How come? The fireball is actually the air in front of the meteorite. It is compressed by the super high speed of the meteorite. The outside catches fire, but that layer is burned off on impact as a result of landing on Earth. As you would probably guess, when they land, the meteorites are lukewarm at most, but not as hot as lava. One side of the moon is permanently in the dark. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a myth. Oh, come on. First the sun and now the moon. Am I living a lie? (laughs) So people look at the sky and see only the bright side of the moon. The reality is the Earth shines equally on all sides of the moon as it rotates and orbits the Earth. Half of the moon is in shadow, and half gets sunshine similar to Earth. That's not true. Similar to Earth, it doesn't have a permanent dark side. The logic is simple. The moon orbits Earth, but it also rotates on its own axis. When you think about it, we're always looking at the same side of the moon. Black holes take in everything that comes their way. What is it? Myth or fact? Black holes don't have infinite mass and gravitational force. But still, no one really knows for sure what happens to the things pulled into them. Experts do know black holes do not have supergravity, though. Let's imagine this. If there was a black hole as big as the sun, it wouldn't immediately eat the whole planet. Imagine black holes as vacuum cleaners. It does draw in a cloud of dust near its range, but other specks of dust remain where they are. So even if there was a black hole replacing the sun, all the planets would continue to orbit similarly. They wouldn't go into the black hole. If a star or something else got into the range of the black hole, only then would its gravity affect the star. When you call someone, the signal bounces off a satellite. Is this a myth or a fact? Yep, it's a myth. Or rather, an urban legend or misconception, you name it. I mean, there are some satellite phones, but we, you know, regular people, don't use those every day. Although, your mobile phone works in a much different way. When you call someone, the nearest tower connects you to the other person online. This is why there are tower connections, huge networks of tower-to-tower connections, and hidden cables. The moon has no gravity. Any guesses? Myth or fact? This is an urban legend. Ask any astronaut you know. If you don't know any, just trust me. There is footage proving that the moon has gravity. When I say the moon has gravity, don't think it's similar to the gravity on Earth that makes the apple fall. The moon's gravity is only about one-sixth of Earth's. How does it feel to walk on the surface of the moon? The second man on the moon, Buzz Aldrin, mentioned it's like moving in slow motion and, quote, perhaps not too far from a trampoline, but without the springiness and instability, end quote. The sunset on Mars appears blue. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a fact! Magnificent sunsets. The sky is filled with different shades of yellow. Now, imagine this in blue. According to NASA, sunsets on Mars would look bluish, watching them with bare eyes. It's because of dust. Dust particles closer to the sun appear in blue tones. There is something called moonquakes. Does it sound like a myth or a fact? 
It's a fact! Quakes happen on the moon too, and they're called moonquakes. They have different features, not really similar to the quakes on Earth, though. A planet can be hot enough to vaporize rocks. Any guesses? Is this a myth or a fact? This is a fact! The temperature in this universe is indeed very high. There's a planet, the temperature of which is enough to melt and even vaporize rocks. It's two times bigger than the Earth. This super-Earth is similar to our planet, but it is way too hot. Experts believe that it possibly has oceans of lava and clouds that rain molten rock. One million Earths can fit inside the sun. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a fact. Although the sun is one of more than 100 billion stars in the Milky Way, which is at the heart of our solar system, it can fit one million Earths. Yeah, it looks small when we see it from here. But it's only because it's so far away from Earth. All comets have tails. Myth or fact? It's true. Some comets simply don't show their tails. They look like someone threw a snowball into space. Space is completely silent. What do you say? Shh, I knew it was too easy. This is a fact. Space doesn't have an atmosphere, so there's no way to hear any sound there. Mercury is the hottest planet. Myth or fact? Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, so this should be a fact, huh? No, not really. Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system and the second planet from the Sun. But the distance from the Sun isn't what defines the temperature. The heat depends on the atmosphere. So Venus's atmosphere consists mostly of carbon dioxide and some nitrogen. This combination makes the atmosphere very thick. When I say thick, I mean it. Throughout the year, the surface of Venus maintains a temperature of around 860 degrees Fahrenheit. Mercury's surface resembles the temperature of a desert, but is much higher in terms of temperature variations. Venus spins clockwise. What do you say? This is a fact. Venus spins in the opposite direction compared to many other planets. The Sun rises in the west, and its rotation is very slow. Venus needs 225 Earth days to complete its spinning around the Sun. The planet's distance from the Sun affects the duration of one rotation. It's too close to the Sun, and the Sun has a strong, noticeable pull on the planets. Footprints on the Moon can stay there for millions of years. Do you think this is a fact or a myth? Fact checked! The Moon has no atmosphere. So there's no wind blowing, and without the wind, there's no way to erase the footprints without any intervention. So, how many points did you get? Let me know in the comments. Ah, consider the rogue planet, the cosmic wanderer that nobody wants to take home. Basically, a rogue planet is a planet that has been ejected from its own star system and is now floating aimlessly through space like a cosmic loner. These planets aren't just a theory scientists have actually detected some in our galaxy. In fact, estimates suggest that there may be lots of these cosmic nomads floating around the Milky Way. And they aren't just small rocky worlds like Earth. Some of them are actually massive gas giants, many times larger than Jupiter. These behemoths could potentially have their own moons and even their own mini-systems orbiting around them. For example, one of the most famous rogue planets we know of has a complicated name. Here, you read it for yourself. It's located about 80 light years away from Earth, and it was discovered in 2013. This rogue planet is estimated to be around six times the mass of Jupiter and is believed to be around 12 million years old. And yes, just because these cosmic loners don't have a star, it doesn't mean they're super cold. They can still generate heat and light from their own internal processes. Some may even have magnetic fields and auroras, just like Earth. In other words, rogue planets could potentially be habitable, if they have the right conditions. So, what would life on such a planet look like? And could we potentially live in such a world? Well, living on a rogue planet can be a lonely existence. They have no warm sun to bask in, no cozy atmosphere to cuddle up in, and no cosmic neighbors to have barbecue with. That's why we'd have to get creative. Let's start with the most obvious problem. We'd have a hard time without light and heat. So how do we fix this? 
Well, we'd probably have to invest in some really fancy space heaters and wear fashionable super warm spacesuits. Or we could invent a whole new way to generate electricity without relying on solar power. For example, how about using geothermal energy? Now that's hot stuff! Each planet has an internal source of heat. Without it, they would all be nothing more than cold, lifeless rocks floating through space. This internal heat can be harnessed and used to power everything, from homes to factories to spaceships. It's like having a hot tub big enough to power an entire city. And that city, most likely, will be located underground, closer to the heat source. And as for light, well, we'd probably have to build some really bright flashlights. Or maybe even learn to genetically engineer some bioluminescent organisms to light up our homes. Just imagine, space space is overgrown with neon mushrooms and plants. By the way, speaking of plants, plant life would be pretty hard to come by without a star. So what would we eat? Well, we could use the same geothermal vents that we talked about or some chemical reactions to sustain ourselves. And hey, maybe we'd develop a taste for sulfur-rich foods. Or we'd start fermenting our own drinks from the bubbling volcanic mud. Yum! But besides food, we'd have a more important problem. Living on a rogue planet would be breathtaking, literally. We'd have no air. You see, not all rogue planets have good, stable atmospheres. It all depends on their size, composition, and other things. But even if our new home does have an atmosphere, it may be incredibly thin and unstable. We'd have no pretty blue skies or dramatic sunsets to admire. Instead, we'd be staring out into the infinite void of space, where the stars would be brighter than ever before. And forget about weather patterns. Without an atmosphere to create them, we'd have no rain, no snow, and no thunderstorms. And that's just some minor problems. What's worse, the temperature on the planet would be wildly fluctuating, swinging from unbearable heat to unbearable cold. It would be like living in an oven that's always being turned on and off. And finally, we'd be exposed to all kinds of space debris and cosmic radiation. So, if you don't want to get crispy, you might want to invest in some serious SPF. So, how do we fix it? Well, we'd have to find a way to generate our own oxygen and probably create something like a space-age biosphere. For example, we could grow some plants that could produce oxygen. Or we'd learn to filter the air like a high-tech air purifier. Finally, we have the last most important problem – finding water. And here's where the underwater oceans come to our aid. Now we're really diving deep into the possibilities. Nyuk, nyuk. But seriously, scientists suggest that some of these planets may indeed have underwater oceans. It would be like living on a giant water balloon that's been buried underground, with the ground beneath your feet made of ice and rock. In other words, we could just tap into these underground oceans. They could provide us with a source of water for drinking, farming, and manufacturing. Maybe even with some other resources and materials we've never seen before. And by the way, who knows what kind of strange creatures might be lurking in those underground seas. But don't worry. Even if we don't have any underground oasis, there are also other options. We could get some water from comets, ice mining, and even from the atmosphere, the one we just created before. Finally, we need to find and mine some resources to build our homes and other stuff. And a rogue planet might not have the same kinds of resources as a planet that orbits a star. It's like trying to find some treasures in a desert. Not exactly a sure thing. We may have to rely on resources from nearby asteroids and things like that. And if we want to extract resources from the planet itself, we might need to drill down through miles of ice and rock. But hey, if you're up for the challenge, there'll always be a chance you'll strike it rich on a rogue planet. And who knows? Maybe you'll discover some new resources that are even more valuable than gold or diamonds. Great! Looks like we've solved the most important problems. Now, there may be other small difficulties. For example, we'd also have to deal with some seriously long days and nights, depending on how fast our planet was rotating. And we wouldn't have a normal, regular day-night cycle. The rotation of our planet could be wildly unpredictable. Maybe we'd have weeks-long nights, followed by weeks-long days, which could really mess with our sleep schedules. 
we might have to develop some really strong coffee to keep us going through those long, dark nights. But, hypothetically, we can adapt to all these things and overcome all the challenges. And now, finally, welcome to the rogue planet, where the sun never rises, but the adventures never end. Thanks to our advanced technology, we've managed to create a comfortable and habitable environment in this once barren world. The sky above us is now a beautiful shade of blue, filled with fluffy white clouds and the occasional flock of flying creatures. Don't ask. As we venture out from our underground habitats, we're greeted by a world that's full of surprises. Strange plants and animals have adapted to the unique conditions of this planet, some with bioluminescent features that glow in the dark. And be careful if you want to go swimming in the underground ocean. They might be home to some bizarre creatures who want to feast on… well, we'll come back to that. Maybe. As you can see, we've created sprawling cities and thriving communities, powered by the planet's geothermal energy. We also created a bunch of artificial light sources that keep things bright throughout the dark, chilly nights. Of course, we still have some problems with navigation and timekeeping, but things aren't as dull as they used to be, are they? Overall, living on a rogue planet would definitely have its challenges, but it could also be a pretty exciting way to experience the universe. And who knows? Maybe someday we'll find such a planet and actually turn it into a bustling intergalactic metropolis someday. But until then, let's enjoy and tidy up our dear Earth. Soaring temperatures of more than 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit, solid rocks of blazing superhot fire, immense pressures 3.5 million times stronger than on the surface of the Earth. These are just some of the things cooking 1,800 miles beneath your feet as you're watching this video. How? The Sun is burning with a temperature similar to our planet's core, but it's 93 million miles away. So why isn't Earth melting away from its own core? Our little blue planet is made of many layers stacked one upon another. The inner core, the outer one, the mantle, and the crust. The deeper you go, the hotter and more pressurized it gets. Plate tectonics are layers of the mantle and crust piggyback riding, forever moving and just having a good time. Scientists discovered there are nine plates in total in different parts of the world. When these plates move and grind on each other, earthquakes occur. Energy is released as a result, and we feel it on the surface. Think of it as trying to shut a car door after stuffing it to the brim. When you realize there's something in the way, remove it, and boom, everything topples. Billions of years ago, our lands were all interlocked in what was called Pangaea. But slowly, and I mean slowly, over the years, the continents drifted apart into what we have right now. The Earth was also cooler on the inside, but it slowly started generating more heat in the core. Earthquakes are measured with intensity and magnitude. We see how far the effects of an earthquake reach through magnitude, and the intensity is the measure of its power. Over at the mantle, the cooler rocks begin sinking, and hot material from the core rises up. When this happens, the plates begin moving, and as a result, they create mountains, hills, and bodies of water we have today. None of these things happen overnight. It takes millions of years to actually see something. All the way in the layers of the Earth, there are different sources of heat, mainly from when the planet was initially formed. Friction heating occurs when materials begin sinking down to the center of the Earth. Since the Earth is surrounded by a solid mantle, the crust floating on top of it acts as a barrier to protect us from the Earth's insides. But the secret for its success is the difference between heat and temperature. Simply put, heat is just energy, and temperature is its density. If the Sun was 1,800 miles away from the surface of the Earth and boiling at the same temperature as our core, we would melt like ice cream on a hot, sunny day. A shock from a small, short circuit when plugging out your phone charger from the socket won't be too harmful, even though a spark can have temperatures of around 2,700 degrees. But if you dipped your body in a boiling bath of hot water at around 200 degrees, let's just say it's not worth it. Just because the temperature of the sun's surface is roughly the same as the Earth's core doesn't mean the heat distribution is the same. The Earth's core is teeming with iron throughout the layers. But on the surface, the iron atoms are arranged into cube shapes. That's when iron is in normal room temperature and regular pressure. But put in extreme conditions, 
the atomic shape changes into hexagons. For a long time, scientists thought that the iron in the core was hexagon-shaped, but they found out it retained its cubic formation 1,800 miles underground. Since the core has so much pressure, the atoms simply don't have a place to move to change their shape. If you were standing in a subway train that was packed full, you wouldn't even have space to lift your arm. But everyone inside is able to switch positions while keeping the original shape. That's why the structure of the Earth's core is solid and not liquid. The atoms are so tightly packed that they can't even transition into a liquid state. But in a world where the Earth's core liquefied, we'd witness the worst consequences, starting with major and mass volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and tidal waves. Every major hotspot would be in danger, and the ring of fire would be a non-stop fountain of lava spewing out. Cool material from the upper layers sinks down to the core and vice versa. With a liquid and incredibly unstable core, this process would be much faster. Every major city and town by the coast would be washed away by tidal waves, and all the volcanoes erupting will blacken the sky with ash and smoke. This would temporarily block the sunlight from entering our atmosphere and eventually force anything flying in the air to remain on the ground. The lands we currently live on would feel like ice breaking away from a glacier and floating off. Many dormant volcanoes would wake up from their slumber and spew out their morning lava all over the place. The ground formation and structure would change permanently. Magma from the bottom of the ocean trenches would find its way up to the surface and change the currents in the oceans. The Arctic Ocean and Antarctica would melt away and add to the rise of water levels all around the northern and southern hemispheres, and eventually, the world. Wildlife on land wouldn't be able to flourish, and all the greenery would disappear. Marine life would have to find a way to escape the changes in the ocean temperature. The world economy would crash as an international emergency would be declared to try and figure out a way to stop this. But humanity would barely make it alive and would have to strive to continue existing. Well, of course, something like this will never happen. But if the Earth's core cooled down, then we wouldn't have massive volcanic eruptions. No devastating earthquakes nor tidal waves. In fact, none of these things would happen since they require energy to function. The continents would stop moving and changing. Sounds cool, right? Mm, no. This means that the magnetic field protecting our planet would disappear, which would make us extremely vulnerable to cosmic radiation, as well as asteroids and meteorites. The sun's rays will feel even more intense than usual, which will make it extremely unsafe for anyone to go outside. The heat produced in the core is responsible for recycling the carbon that goes back to the surface. Now, recycling would stop altogether. Carbon is an essential part of carbon dioxide that plants need to survive. So all the trees and plants on the surface and in the water would stop growing and wouldn't be able to produce oxygen for the rest of the world. With cosmic radiation and lack of oxygen, humans would have to live in bunkers with artificial ventilation systems. The Earth's surface would become a no-go zone and start to resemble Mars. With nothing to power the Earth from the inside, it began to dry up and crumble internally. Much of the Earth's surface is made out of oxygen, so without it, we would eventually see something like major sinkholes around the world. Sinkholes that can take down cities like New York and Paris, along with landslides in many cities and unstable landscapes all over the place. Every single city's infrastructure would eventually collapse and make the ground unwalkable. So even if you did live in an underground bunker, chances are the foundation wouldn't last and you'd be exposed to the cosmic radiation. But all of this can vanish in the blink of an eye if an asteroid comes falling down. Whether it's tiny or colossal, we would be seeing more of those than actual rain. Without a magnetic field, the Earth can't block any foreign object that flies through our atmosphere. If an asteroid the size of Rhode Island came falling down, the damage would be much more than with the Earth's core hot and running. With the ground as fragile as potato chips, the ripple effect would be much wider and cause more indirect destruction around us. The Earth would eventually collapse in on itself and break into pieces until it's lost its own gravitational energy. It'd end up being a bunch of rocks and pebbles floating around in the emptiness of space. But nothing like that will happen either. We're living fine with our solid hot Earth core. As long as it's doing okay, then we can keep on doing our thing.